Hello, my name is William Mulate. I'm project manager at the Center for Biodiversity Informatics in the IT division of the Missouri Botanical Garden. And I'm here representing my colleagues from the World Forum Online project. And we would like to present our experience with the World Forum Online taxonomic backbone. As you may know, the plan list was created in 2010 through the collaboration of large, large database aggregated by the work of the Royal Botanical Garden of Kew and the Missouri Botanical Garden, among others and as a result of the first target one of the global strategy for plants conservation. The plan list was a working list of all plants species known. Its objective was to be an integration of all vascular plants and bryophytes, but it has been static since 2014, and it requires an update. World Forum 9 is organized in the framework of a consortium of institutions which have signed a memorandum of understanding open for signature on January 2013. The consortium currently comprises a total of 47 worldwide partner institutions, and they meet on a regular basis with 17 meetings held to date. The World for Online considers the entire plant world, starting from biophytes to angiosperms, and it must be free access over the internet. It presents a consensus classification to facilitate the understanding of the plant world by non-botanists. In order to achieve this goal, the project needs the expertise of collaborative networks of individuals and of taxonomists, and to develop a consensus classification, as well as descriptive data from published works. The objective is to provide information that contributes to a better comprehension of the plant situation in a changing environment. The consortium is organized in three main entities, a world of a council that meets twice per year and decides on strategic matters, and three subgroups, the taxonomic working group dealing with classification and taxonomy, uh, the technical working group dealing with the architecture of the database, content on the website, and any uh, development of tools, and the communication working group that facilitates the communication among members of the council working groups and the public. The public portal was developed by the Missouri Botanical Garden based on the eMonocot portal kindly offered by the Royal Botanical Gardens Q. It was initially populated with a plan list, taxonomic backbone, and augmented by new taxonomic sources like Solanacea source. It was launched on July 2017 during the International Botanical Congress in Shenzhen, China. A major new version of the website and the taxonomic data is planned for the end of this year, thanks to the valuable collaboration of uh, colleagues from the Royal Botanical Gardens at Edinburgh. Now, even when it was a great start for a project, it was made clear from the beginning that the eMonocode portal was provided as it was. No support, no documentation, no manuals, basically only the code. To understand how it works, we have to consider that the portal is logically divided in two parts, the taxonomic backbone and the descriptive content. Descriptive content can be textual descriptions, images, geographical distribution, a geographic distributions, identification of keys, and atomized data like trait status, life forms, or habitat. Here's a high level diagram of the system being developed. And here's a list of 37 38 approved taxonomic expert networks. The current infrastructure is in the Google Cloud Platform, thanks to a donation received from Google by New York Botanical Garden and contributed to the project. We have set our testing stage and production environment there. Here's a simplified workflow diagram of the process of updating the taxonomic backbone from the contributions of taxonomic expert groups as providers. Note that beyond a clinical check of the format in which the data is contributed, we need to validate or assign new W4IDs to an existing or new name respectively. This process is what we call the name matching. Also note that the contributor is always provided with feedback on the result of the process, since we will want them to update the records with the W4ID assigned. This new globally unique ID was assigned to all known plants names in the WFO, including both vascular and non-vascular plants. And these IDs were also cross-referenced with identifiers from those plant names included in the in IBNI and TPL. In order to do the matching, 
And while a more definite robust solution was provided by our colleagues, we developed a temporary name matching tool only for internal use. As some of you may know, may guess now, the tool is still pending to be developed and we have had to extend our temporary solution to cope with newer and bigger needs. These are the major steps in the workflow online ID name matching process. As usage is incremented, we had to fine tune the name matching algorithm to tighten the results. Here, for example, are some of the considerations of different endings in names. The processing data is being classified into match, near match, main match, and not match, and in some cases, even repetition. The output is the, the process is uh, the same columns provided plus a W4ID and any comments that could provide an insight on what happened. As one would expect, what started as a simple idea has become a whole process, but gladly our tent manager, Alan, Alan Elio, is in charge of working directly with the tents and different specialists to figure out some of those non-match reports. One strong recommendation is that we use tool existing tools or adapt them. We use the GBF Darwin Core Archive Validator to check the files before harvesting. This tool catches most of the basic errors. Of course, constant use of the chosen formats and tools allows the team to develop the expertise that speeds up the results and facilitates the resolution of even the most cryptic errors. The same goes on for the port e monitor portal. After several years of harvesting and working with this tool, we have familiarized ourselves with the part that loads the taxonomic backbone and descriptive content. Much of these required conditions from the point of view of the provider have been added into three guidelines for data providers, the boxes in yellow there. And they are the go-to reference when a new user wants to know something about format processes and other information. But the eMonocode system is a old system, and it implies that legacy code could easily become outdated and affect its functionality. Here are the sources we have used to update the higher level classification of the taxonomic backbone. This is a process that anyone who's still handling a taxonomic backbone knows about this merging of checklists, comparing with others to uh, improve the, the data that we have. In this case, there's APG4, PPG1, and so on. As with any major update, we had to review the consistency of our database because it gave errors after we did that. One of the checks that we do with the pre harvest database, we review the synonymy, the family, and the major groups assignments. We also never delete any record. Once it has a domain for ID, we exclude it. But then there's rules about what could be excluded and how's the relation to the rest of the taxonomy. Also included some minor checks for empty fields where there should be a value reference to excluded names and so on. Last in this year, we have been very busy doing several of these merge of checklists. In this case, this is uh, the WCVP, the World Checklist of Vascular Plants, um, added to do work for online. Note that even when some of them are uh, both in W4 and WCVP, they can be an exact match or they could have actually different values in family, taxonomic status, authors, and publications. This is the same situation but with the INI ID and the WCVP. Note that some of the names with any ID and both WCVP and WCVP may have different any IDs assigned. This is a representation that out of the 1,356,000 records or names in WCVP, only 810,000 were actually being able to um, try to match uh, to something that we, we do have. And of course, this means that uh, those reports that come out, the differences in yellow, have to be reviewed in, in some of the checklists like POWO or IBNI 
And even then you can see how they might be different or have some differences that in some cases are quickly resolved by the providers and some are not. Um, but it, it also uh, implies that every time that we do this again, we have to check for those errors. Here's the results of name matching. We had 82% with uh, name matching Wolf Online and Indian names and 84 with WCVP names and WFO. But in reality, we have a coverage of IBNI that went from 65% to 82%. And the nomenclator coverage is currently 89% if we count Tropicos ID as the nomenclator for bryophytes. This relation between different checklists allows us to do things like this one. This is we created, created entry points in Wolf Online that takes the uh, ID of one other list like IBNI or TPL and returns the corresponding record in World for Also, here's an example of where new names are coming from. Last year, new names were not only coming from this process of uh, incorporating the higher taxonomy and w the WCVP data set, but also from new names were coming from flooded floras. Particularly, new endemics um, are coming in from uh, different providers like uh, Flora of Madagascar, <clears throat> Flora of Brazil, Flora of Africa Central, uh, South Africa, and Colombia. We also track down the issue of uh, two names with one EMI identifier, for example, that came with some of the sources, in this case, TPL. This is a publication we had last year where um, the process of placing the taxonomies in the heart of this, of this whole uh, endeavor is explained in detail. Well, a couple of things that I want to mention now is that we have uh, provided a way to download data, a snapshot of the data, and this is really important because in a way people is able to take it as a ZZ0 and use it, um, which is our objective with this process. Um, and also, they can take it and develop new tools. For example, this World for our package allows name matching using the um, data from Workflow that the article published last year. Finally, we are in the process of uh, publicizing endpoints in the API inherited by from eMonica um, to the Workflow Online portal. This allows us to get the content directly um, the programming from thank you very much any questions